Okay, so last time we talked about a terrible, not so fun sci-fi movie. Today we're gonna talk about a terrible, really fun sci-fi movie called Cybernator. The year is 2010, the future. There are rogue military cyborgs trying to take out the actual military due to them being rogues. Your typical romantic comedy. You know, I really thought we would've heard about this happening in 2010, but um, the more you know. You know this is the future, because check out this DVD, okay? It looks like a normal DVD case, right? But then, when you slip the movie out, ah, CD case, that's because it's the future! Look at that, such a, such a space waster being twice the size that it needs to be. Look at that, I mean, it just looks like it should be in a Sega CD somewhere, but it's a, it's a movie. Boy, what a movie it is. Bonus, in addition to playing on your DVD player, this DVD disc will also play on a PC with the following requirements. Windows 95 only, DVD-ROM drive, 133 MHz Pentium, 16 MB RAM, 5 MB hard drive, SVGA graphics, yada yada yada, etc. You gotta have a lot of tech to work this, so uh, just a heads up for those who want to buy Cybernator for themselves. Easy to follow, fully interactive menus allow the viewer total control over their home entertainment environment. In case you're still using VHSs where you have no control, they're just popping themselves into the VCR. You don't know what they're gonna do, what you're gonna see. You don't even know what the movie is, it's just they've, they've taken over your life. But with DVDs, you got control. Cybernator is not an entirely serious venture, but that doesn't mean that it's good. Because this is the kind of humor that you're gonna be in for. Why I always say it's nobody's business what goes on between two condescending adults. <laughs> I like that, you know, I really do... Yeah, I really admire career women. Too much acting! What a zany performance! So here's where we're introduced to the villain we're gonna be seeing for most of this film. She's no machine. Just a fragile human. And the damn things break so easy. <laughs> no, seriously, where, where's the real villain? I'm just gonna call him Cybernator. The way he talks is like he's just some dude they picked up off the street. There's no intimidation in his voice. There's no kind of uh, alterations they've done to make him sound a little scarier. He's just a bro. Very good, Senator. Cyborgs, don't despair. We brought a spare. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude, it's me, Cybernator. Wanna go to Taco Bell, get us some gorditas? They killed this Senator here, and the world lost a great over-actor that day. But let's get to the two most important elements of this movie. Boobs and people with stupid shit on their faces. It's nice to know in the future of 2010, strip clubs are gonna have talent shows. Spared no expense with the decorations there. Like, everyone at this club looks so bored. Why did they go there? The stripper looks bored, the people watching, Who's being entertained by this? Here we meet our main character, Brent McCord, who is a grizzled cop with fabulous hair, and he constantly looks stoned out of his mind. Now McCord hates cyborgs, or Borgies as he calls them. So did you notice the two Borgies that came in a little while ago? So a couple of Borgies just happened to show up tonight? Uh, the Borgies. Apparently Borgies is like a racist term in this universe? They don't really give a particular reason for why he hates cyborgs so much, other than they give him the creeps. So apparently he's just a big asshole. This movie is a pretty good metaphor for racial conflict throughout history. McCord has gone to this strip club to visit his girlfriend, Blue, who is paying for her tuition by stripping. For whatever school she's going to, I don't know. Beauty school? I really hope that they're not paying a lot for this school because she sounds like the dumbest person on the planet. Yeah, I enjoy it, but my school is still the most important thing. 
And besides, Brent, no one ever touches me except you, as you know damn well. Hey, Weave. Say hot stuff. You knocked him dead again tonight. Thanks, sugar. Did they tell her to speak to the camera, or is that just where her cue cards are? McCord has come to this strip club with his partner, and you know what that means. He gonna die. Spoilers for later, by the way. He's never gonna get to use the most exclusive and inconvenient men's room in the history of ever. Meanwhile, we got Senator Exposition sitting in a car explaining that there is a secret project involving cyborgs of some sort that is getting senators killed. Damn it, I hate dealing with the military. Damn. So he gets killed. Hey guys, you're dead or whatever. It's a good thing Cybernator is wearing that Dracula poncho, because otherwise he might get rained on and he's a cyborg, you know. So McCord and his soon-to-be-dead partner find out that the cyborgs are military-grade cyborgs, so they go to this military base to confront them about it. What has that got to do with the army? I'm, I'm sorry, what country are they in? This military guy denies any involvement with the cyborg stuff and says that they don't have any cyborgs in the military at all. But luckily, some guy just happens to come in and shove this folder with top secret information on it in front of McCord's face. Hmm. The guy comes to them later and says that he wants to tell them about whatever information he has in a secret place. There's this uh, alleyway off of Hollywood and Vine. We know the place. Dark Alley seems perfectly safe. Meanwhile, you got Cybernator in a van over there watching them. Somehow, he looks even dumber in the daytime. Their informant and his partner get killed. Shocking turn of events. McCord goes after Cybernator there, and we get the Battle of the Millennium. Hey man, wanna watch the game, down some brews? That's cool. You ever think, like, what if dogs could talk? What would they say, bro? You know, you wouldn't think I could pull off this all-black look in the summer, but as a cyborg, I have no body temperature to maintain. So they reveal that Cybernator has a boss that he has to answer to, a much more well-known actor. But the important thing here is that they reveal that Cybernator's name is Captain Hare. Report Hare. Captain Hare, important, sir. You shitting me, movie? First I was self-conscious about the name Captain Hare, but, you know, really come to embrace it. What I'm trying to say, sir, is he was good. He was good, bro. You might say he's like my brother. So, you're both cyborgs then? Who, who is this movie for? Why did those bastard machines just kill my partner? Acting! Now things are personal, and McCord threatens to cancel all of their fucking asses. Which makes me think that he doesn't know how cyborgs or technology works. I'm gonna find those clowns of yours and cancel every one of their fucking asses. Then we get to play the game of Dutch Angle, Terrible Camera Work, or both. They do the angry captain of the police cliche, where he's like chewing him out for disobeying an order. Except he doesn't fire him, but he quits anyway. I ought to bust your ass, except that I got a shortage of good men. Yeah? Fuck your shortage. I quit. Oh yeah, you're gonna keep me on despite me explicitly saying I'm gonna disobey your orders? Well, I quit. In a couple days off and you come back and see me, I will give you your new assignment. My what? As of right now, you're off this case. You can't do that to me. I made myself clear? Yes, sir. You just quit! Did he punish him by rehiring him? So McCord goes home to Grandma's house, and we get more drama with him and his girlfriend. And what if you die? Huh? What happens then? You knew the risk when you fell for a cop. Truly some spectacular acting going on in this scene. 
the apron with no pants, the floral couch, super depressing. Then we get an extremely lengthy, blurry, foggy sex scene. All I can see is this giant rug on his chest and two nipples staring at me like googly eyes. So he decides he's going to break into this military base and find all their records about these cyborgs, and his girlfriend insists on going with him. If we go, we go together. You realize what you're getting yourself into? Yes. All right then, let's go. Well, that was easy. And when he gets there, he finds out that he's a Borgie. You know, this would have been a shocking revelation if it hadn't been spoiled on the back of the box. And then he gets shot on the way out. What the hell did you do to him? Please stop trying to act. Now, I think the shot of a doctor here was meant to be an out of focus, waking up point of view shot that they didn't add an effect to. So the name of this movie actually comes from Project Cybernator, which was the project that involved the military cyborgs that went wrong. So the military want McCord's help in taking them out, because it turns out that they made him into a cyborg as well, and then wiped his memories of it. Because he was an experiment, I guess, that they just put back into society. He takes all of this information with the same smarm face that he just keeps doing through the whole movie. Doing this means he gets to kill the people who killed his partner, which was his whole goal the entire time anyway. But isn't that what you were after? To get Peck? That, that was different. Then it was my idea. And that was before all this. Well, when you put it that way, it just sounds kind of stupid. You're waiting right here for your Brent. That you can count on. She wasn't even looking at him! So McCord goes off to kill all of the cyborgs, which apparently just equals one before he goes on his main mission. Then we get this awkward belly dancing scene with Helmet McGee over here, and this guy comes over to him and picks the world's pettiest fight. Cyborg scum, got the passion of a toaster. Some of my best friends are toasters. So the cyborg kills the guy, and it turns out McCord was there the whole time and just watched it happen. What an asshole! Though, in all fairness, that guy was in the wrong. So now that McCord has a body count of precisely one, I guess he's gonna go after the final boss, and he just comes across the base. They never really explain how he found where they were, he just happens to go there. All of the walls appear to be made of crumpled up pieces of paper. He fights some random goons, such as Overweight Cyborg and Samurai Guy. But mostly you're gonna get a lot of wandering through hallways silently to pad out the runtime. Not cool to come into my home and harsh my mellow, bro. So here is the best worst part of the movie. He defeats Captain Hare, but the way that he does it is the dumbest way possible. obvious weakness like that, you don't just leave it exposed. Like, wear a helmet or something, man. That's like if he had, like, an open chest cavity and then just didn't wear a vest and left it open like that. I mean, he could have been putting, like, a sweater on and then accidentally pulled them out and killed himself. It's a very precarious position there. I'm really gonna miss that guy. He's great. So stupid. <laughs> so now McCord's gonna fight the big boss, and he reveals that they are both the same cyborg model. Which doesn't really mean much in the end, but cool. He's speeching at him for forever, while McCord just continuously shoots him. In one ear, out the other. The acting in this scene from the bad guy is so much better than this movie deserves. It's not even really great or original writing, but the way he says it is great. But it's just being wasted here. You're not my fucking brother. 
You're not my brother. Perhaps I made a mistake. Maybe you're my executioner. And if you are that, execute me. He's trying to convince McCord to switch sides to the cyborg side, because, you know, they've given him so much to entice him. But even he can't penetrate McCord's magnificent quaff. And then the speech just keeps on going and wears out its welcome. They never ever meant to create a cyborg superior to them. Why do you think we would- You literally have two minutes left of the movie, dude. Wrap it up. Yeah. And stupidity wins the day. Uh, well, that was cer well, that was certainly something. I know that it was not entirely meant seriously, but it uh, was not incredibly successful in trying to be humorous on its own. Um, though some of the jokes are kind of funny. It's just a really fun B movie. Pretty much everyone in the movie, except for the main boss, is a terrible actor, but amazingly so. The Cybernator himself, this uh, tube head guy, is the best part of the movie. I would recommend this film just for this guy alone. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. Have fun with Cybernator. See you next time.